What's going on? Good afternoon, Mang Hapong, Kabayayan. It's a special day today. I am going to be making a very delicious and very prominent Filipino dish for dinner tonight. Uh, Bicol Express. So the queen and I have to go for a little shopping. Hey! <laughs> we got to pick up just a few more ingredients. We thought we got everything yesterday. Unfortunately, there was a few things that were missing. Um, we need to go find some coconut milk and we need to find a little bit of pork belly for this meal. We have everything else in the house and ready to go. This is definitely a special meal for us. Um, this meal was requested by a dear friend of ours back home in America, uh, my good friend Dino. Dino is a Filipino-American who comes with a absolutely legendary story, and I really do want to talk about it for a minute and promote the good cause that he has. Uh, Dino works with um, a group called Heroes on the Water, uh, which is ironically how I met most of my Seattleite uh, Filipino-American brethren in the fishing world of uh, extreme kayak fishing in the Northwest. Heroes on the Water is a really amazing group of individuals that come together to bring uh, veterans, both active and disabled, and military servicemen together to come out, to go on kayaks, to see the world, see the oceans, and go fishing. Really just was kind of an inspirational group that I fell into accidentally just by knowing some fishing guys and being in the seafood world in Seattle. Dino was planning on coming to visit us with his brothers and his family in November, and we were really, really excited about that. But tragically, uh, Dino had a immediate family member pass just recently, and they have all had to cancel their trip and reroute their trip to a different island to pay their respects and farewells to a uh, beloved family member. So this, uh, this episode will be dedicated to them and uh, we send all our love and condolences to the Ebelencia family and everybody else involved. God bless you guys and we're so sorry for your loss, but we are going to cook an amazing dinner tonight for you guys to watch and dedicate to you the Coal Express with some beautiful pork belly, some peppers, some coconut milk, and uh, I'm really excited for it. We actually haven't had this dish here yet, so I really hope that it turns out well. And again, thank you so much to Dino and his wife and everybody else involved who's asked for this, and uh, this dish is for you guys. We love you so much, and let's go uh, get our ingredients so we can cook our uh, Bicol Express. Don't even have to be on the beach. Hello. 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 Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That's the level of hospitality. I could offer a beer just saying hello. Stop driving. Literally, I never got off the bike. I didn't turn off the bike. While he's looking at the pork belly, figuring out which one to get, I need, I need dish soap. So a lot of times the dish soap comes like this in a little tub. Do you love for dish soap? 35 pesos. 35? Okay. 127. Last 35. 262. Oh, look at that. The price is right on top and I asked. <laughs> Hey. 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 All right, so we got the pork belly real quick. Uh, I managed to find one good piece, even though it's pretty much buyout time. My fault. Um, we still have one last ingredient we need to go find, which is coconut milk. Uh, I think we can find it right down by our house. Hopefully. Tally ho! Hello. See that? I'm not even off the bike yet. That's hospitality in the Philippines. It's the best. Okay, I'm Philippines. Philippines number one. Yeah. Are you Gila? Yeah. One more, they had it waiting. I got one thing of coconut cream. We'll have to walk across the street and see if we can get another one. But I can't get away from out one for the road, eh? That guy. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. On my local corner, there's three stores, so you got options. It's always the best, too, and this is the busy time right now. Everybody's hustling. The fresh catches of the day come in from the boats. Oh, you're trouble. I've seen you before. Mega pon. Usa da koko mama. Oh. Uh, big one, oh. Pila right? Oh. Salama kayo. All right. We got what we need. Time to cross the road. The boys are hitting on the wife over there. I love it. Tell you what, you put my woman with a group of these happy drinking cuyas in the afternoon, man. She puts a smile on everybody's face. Not like they weren't already smiling, but she knows how to do it. Uh. This guy, focus this guy, that's what the YouTube. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, YouTube famous, eh? Yeah? Yeah? Become a superstar. I'll come film anytime. I'm waiting for you still. This guy right here, he's got a story to tell. We need to put him on YouTube. This man survived. He survived the Filipino working force on a cruise ship for a very long time, 16 years. We're gonna have an episode with him very soon. Working, working hard like a like a horse. Yeah, now he drinks like a horse. Yeah. <laughs> Run away without that. Uh, like he working like a chicken without that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to go back and make some dinner. You ready, baby? I'm always ready for dinner. <laughs> hey man, you like me dreadlocks, bro? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Woo, Filipino long beans right here. It's time for Bicol Express. You guys ready? I'm starving. I know the wife is. <laughs> I'm famished. I think this one's gonna be pretty nice. This is a protein heavy meal. So for guys like me, the carne alpha males, protein heavy meals are what it's all about. This is also a hearty, warm, and spicy protein heavy meal. So we're just checking off all my boxes here. Don't know if the queen is going to really enjoy the spice in this one, but we're keeping it authentic. So she's in for it tonight. Oh no! Let's plug in the old microphone. Now we've learned a few things while we're vlogging and we don't know these things until I go to edit the video later. Rule number one, I gotta watch how close this is to my mouth. And uh, number two, I gotta watch when I throw my little chef towel over my shoulder. <laughs> I tend to cover it up. So we're, we're, we're learning here. But let's plug the mic in. What's wrong, babe? You blushing? The wife was telling dirty jokes when the camera was off. That's what I do. <laughs> All right, we gotta go over to the fridge here. Gotta grab some meats and oh, the bagong or the shrimp paste as it is here. And then we gotta grab, uh, is this it? This big giant piece here? This is from today or is this the jowl? The one, this is from today. Okay, so that's the jowl for the sisit. Ooh, I do have a cold beer in here. That'll be enjoyed here in a little bit. Oh, look at her skipping, because she knows I'm getting ready to cook. Because I don't have to. Woo I want to hear that cheer every night then, because I cook every night. Yeah? <laughs> high kick. Yeah, you go ahead. Show me a high kick. Oh, God. <laughs> don't pull a hip. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Former cheerleader over here. Now that she's my cheerleader. Ago. Now she's my cheerleader. Yeah, baby. <sighs> Here's the camera. Thank you. All right, this is not rum, even though this is my favorite Filipino rum that we'd love to be sponsored by. <laughs> no, this is uh, Tang. That Tang, 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 Tang. I'm from Florida. I miss a cold drink. I grew up in a hot environment just like here. I like a cold drink. And even though the doctors say a cold drink might not be healthy for you. Drink up, baby. Boom. All right. It's Bicol Express time. There's a little controversy as to where Bicol Express comes from. What I am reading is that amongst major chefs, major foodies, and major culinary masters of the Philippines, is that some precious little lady who owned a carinderia in the Manila area created this dish and then adapted it into the Bicol area. But the Bicolanos definitely don't like hearing that. So we're gonna keep this part of the argument open. Did Bicol Express originate in the Manila area or in Bicol. Bicol Express contains a very 
simple and understanding set of ingredients. It's not really that intense or, or really heavy to figure out. Uh, it comes with sayote or sour gourd or sour squash here. It comes with these serrano peppers or these sweet and spicy peppers here. Uh, I am going to add a red ch local chili pepper for the color variation, but these also aren't that hot. But if there is any heat or spice that's needed in here, that would go with the traditional red chili peppers, which I think the wife's going to have to go outside and pick a few for me because I don't see any right here. Oh, I got to dig? Yeah, oh, okay. there was like four or five. Oh, okay. Comes with the ginger, the sayote, the green peppers, onion, garlic, and for the extra heat and the authenticity of it, these little bad boys right here, which grow on a bush right outside our door here, these are the local chili pepper, and these things pack a punch. I make my chili garlic sauce with these. They are okay. This is the bagong shrimp paste. This is locally made, locally sourced, and sold right here in our local market in Publishan. Bagong. Bagong. Pork belly. I've got uh, about two-thirds of a kilo of pork belly here, which is plenty for us. We normally split and share a very moderate portion of proteins in the evening because we're really trying to survive on a minimal budget. Do you peel this? Can you eat the outer shell or not? Questions, things I don't know. But this is what it's all about, learning how to cook Filipino. And then last but not least, the other magic ingredient here is the long beans, which we're gonna cut probably into like an inch, inch and a half sections on a little diagonal there. And then of course, to bring it all together and sweeten it all up, we are going to add the coconut cream milk. Uh, here, around here, it's Coco Mama, which is, or the Gata, coconut milk or Gata here. Uh, Coco Mama is definitely the prominent one, and for right now, it is the only one I could source locally in our market. That's our ingredients. First things first, I need to chop and prep all the veggies, chop and prep the meat, and then saute the ginger, the onions, the garlic, and the peppers down. Add the pork belly, brown the pork belly, and then just start adding the bagong and the gata, or the coconut milk. Check it, test it for flavor, and then continue adding and mixing the coconut milk with the bagong shrimp paste for texture and salinity. I think that's just about it. I don't really think I'm missing anything. I'm really excited for this dish. Uh, obviously, the wife has already helped me out and prepared rice, so steaming hot ready rice is already good to go on that, so we've checked off that traditional box. Woohoo! Woo! Thank you, wife. And we're gonna start off with the most difficult thing first, because the rest of this we know that I can knock out in seconds. The first thing is the sayote. From what I've read and researched, everybody traditionally peels it, but I've also read that it's got a really sappy feel and texture, so as you peel it, it gets kind of sappy and slimy. It can get difficult and slippery to work with. So I'm gonna try to be quick on this. It's extremely difficult to peel this edge in here, so uh, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do that. I might peel everything I can, then cut it in half, then kind of trim the base edges afterward. We'll see. And I also have been told that there's a core inside that I need to kind of just flick out. We'll see how it goes. My first sayote, here we go. Wow, so it did instantly get sappy, slimy. That was very quick on that. It's got a fresh smell to it. I like the smell. My peeler is not the greatest high quality peeler in the world, but we make it work. It is very hard to trim these crevices. It smells really good. Yeah, it does smell really good. It's like a really fresh, not citrusy, but like cucumbery type of smell. Wow, that is a waxy, sappy, oily feel there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and split it now. Here we go. Okay, so there is that core that I was talking about. I'm pretty sure you can just, boom, flick that bad boy out. Let's see here. So now we're just gonna peel these last few edges here that I couldn't get before. Tell you what, I have gained so much knowledge being here and cooking already. Just in the first 10, 15 recipes that I've practiced, it's a kid in a, in, in a toy store when a chef gets to try something new. I'm debating, matchstick or cube? Matchstick or cube? cube. Hmm cube. So they're all kind of like thick American french fry thickness right now. We're just going to kind of roll that all together, come along the side here, and then just rock these into some small cubes. And I'm pretty confident that these will stew off just fine and uh, are supposed to add quite a nice little crunchy texture in the middle of it. All right, so they're all about the same thickness there. And then same thing, we'll just come from the side here. And drop the sayote cubes. All right, good to go. 
Now, again, I am only cooking for two people, but the funny part about being a chef is that I don't know how to cook for two people. <laughs> I have been cooking. It's true. I have been. <laughs> I have been cooking large meals my whole life for everybody, and everyone's always invited to my house for dinner. That's for damn sure. Nobody goes hungry when they walk in this door. It's always been kind of a, a thing for me. I just really don't know how to cook for two. So perhaps I'm prepping too many ingredients for a small portioned dish, which could be true, but I don't know. We're going to find out. So next thing is the peppers. Um, I've been told that they like to wait on these and not put them in right off the bat. So let me go ahead and grab another container and uh, we will separate the pepper medleys and uh, stew everything else separately. So I just cut the tips off the peppers. So that's about the size that I've seen on most recipes. That's a lot of green peppers. Yeah, but they're sweet, they're fine. Ooh, a little rot on this one here, but that's okay. These peppers are basically like the most fragile pepper on earth, and they go bad really quickly. Yeah, there was some pretty bad rotten spots in that pepper. We're gonna go ahead and just do a quick julienne and then a chop. And there's literally almost zero spice to these guys. Boom, all right, we got a red pepper base now to add to our green for color and flavor. And then we'll wait on the three little guys here. We don't need to add those for a little bit. Let's work on the rest of the ingredients. Onion. Ta-da! Who doesn't like a delicious, strong red onion? These are kind of like a hybrid, honestly. They're like a red onion shallot mix for me, if you ask me. Okay, so we need uh, another container or bowl for our first saute ingredients. Hey! You ain't Filipino if you ain't using old ice cream containers. I'm just saying right now, it's about as Filipino as it gets. Pop quiz, what flavor did we buy? <whistles> Guess in the comments below. Now it's time for the garlic. Or you can go like this, boom. That's how I do it. Yeah? My little hands aren't tough enough. No? No. I can pretty much get them almost all the way out just with a little hand crush. Are you using all the garlic in it? Yep. A whole clove of garlic. Ooh. Why not? <laughs> you know, you can never have too much garlic. I'm with that. They believe in some spirits around here. I'm keeping the vampires away. <laughs> <laughs> Garlic's peeled. I'll give it a quick crush, quick chop, and get it down to a little dice. Fun fact about garlic, you crush it or chop it, the acillium becomes active. You gotta let it sit for 10 minutes while crushed or chopped. Learn something new every day. Google girlfriend. Before she was fiance, she was Google girlfriend. And uh, I would just walk up and go, what did you learn today, Google girlfriend? Because they're already gonna come up and tell you anyway. And then if they ask a question, you just say, I don't know, why don't you Google it, girlfriend? It's kind of fun. I'm offended. <laughs> All right, again, I might be using too much. I'm not putting a recipe card in this, but we'll, <laughs> we're just gonna go with it. All right, minced ginger. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's too much. So I am going to separate half of that. All right, four of the uh, little super spicy chilies, and they are gonna go in with the peppers. And remember, like I said, these things pack a punch. You do this, and then go to like pick your nose in a few hours or rub your eyeball, you are going to pay for it. All right, so those are in the mix. So we got the heat and the sweet on the pepper side. Last but not least, the beans, man. The big trick here is just checking for tips that you don't like or that are a little old. Other than that, just go for it. Give it a quick rinse. I'm just gonna give them a slight bias cut. A lot of beans. Yeah, it is. Like I said, we got a uh, we got a small pot here. So but let's go ahead and uh, set these aside. These are going to go in with the sayote. Got the peppers. Got the sayote and the long beans. I've got the onion, the garlic, and the ginger ready to rock. Now I just need to prep the meat real quick, and then go ahead and it's time to start browning down everything. All right. If you're new to the channel. 
We are very much minimalists in this kitchen. We travel, we do not like travel with a whole kitchen. So whatever little things and utensils and ingredients came in this kitchen is what we have. Uh, we literally only have one pot and we just cooked our rice in it. So I gotta get the rice out, which is out, boom, done. Ooh, a little ducats or the uh, sticky brown rice at the bottom, my favorite. So the last thing on the list is the meat. Looks like I'm ready to uh, add the garlic, onions, and ginger in here and get that sauteed down a little bit. So we will drop that in the heat. And then I've also read mixed reviews on the bagong and that some of the bagong needs to be cooked and some of it needs to be raw or regular shrimp paste. So we're gonna go ahead and bring some of the shrimp paste out for saute now. And I read about a tablespoon. It's about there. Boom, bagung shrimp paste. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to the mix. Get out my one trusty handy dandy spatula. Okay, can already smell that flavor and the salinity of that coming into the mix there. So we're gonna let that saute up for just a little bit there. Woo, damn, I can smell that. All right, now I gotta haul ass and get over here and do the meat real quick. I've left a little bit of garlic and ginger in here and uh, let's go ahead and get this big piece of pork belly out here. First things first for me, I need to find that bottom layer and separate the bones so that I can work this much faster than normal. The bottom piece I will actually just cook off later in a different dish. Just gonna go ahead and start doing basically about the size chop that I've seen everybody else do. When pork belly is semi-frozen, it is a billion times easier to manipulate and handle. Go ahead and add that in here. All right, so we're getting the pork belly sliced up, put over here for now. I gotta run over here. And, uh, okay, that is sauteed up nicely. Looks good. Don't need to do much else to that. I'm gonna add a little more oil to it though, just so that it can, actually I'm gonna add some pork fat to that. Oh yeah. I've got some reduced pork fat right there, so we'll just oil that up. One more little simmer. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add it over here to the pot. And I want you to keep in mind that this is our tiny kitchen in our tiny studio. So our whole bedroom is gonna smell like this by the end of the night. It is already bagungi in here right now. <laughs> uh, next thing I wanna go ahead and uh, saute up in my opinion is the sayote just for a minute to add some of this flavor so we're going to go ahead and add some more pork fat and i am going to go ahead and bring just a little bit of the bean and most of the sayote in here the rest of this can go actually into the stew and stew off okay so we're going to let that sayote brown down a little bit there we're going to come over here finish up the pork fat real quick Pork belly, yeah. So that one side of this piece was still semi-frozen. This is room temperature, so it's super soft and flexy here. Very nice piece of pork belly. Should uh, cook off very nicely. I believe I'm done with my knife, so we're gonna retire my knife for the night. One key thing here that I could not find anywhere is when to add the vinegar and exactly how much and what type of vinegar. Now I've got the traditional white silver swan vinegar here. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon or about a tablespoon of that. And then I'm also gonna add a little uh, Bahal tuba vinegar in this because straight Filipino. This is coconut wine vinegar. All right, so I've added those in. I am gonna add just a little bit of umami to help tenderize this fat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just mix that. This will be going into the pan right after we're done with the beans and the sayote in the saute pan. And we're just gonna let that soften up there for a little bit. Come over. 
toss. Okay. All right. Very tiny kitchen. I got to clean as I go because now I'm all pork fatty. All right. So we can come over here. I think the sayote and these beans have gotten just a nice little browning on them with that pork fat. So we're going to go ahead, switch everything up in our tiny kitchen. Got to make it work. We're going to go ahead and add that in. Boom. Done. Last thing to do is the pork fat, which we will put in right now. Nothing else needed. And then I can start cleaning this bad boy up. Pan we know is already red hot. Boom. Let's go ahead and just grab some uh, utensils and start spreading that out a little bit. Shout out Philippine Airlines utensils. <laughs> this is going to reduce for quite a little while here. I like to separate some of the oil and the fat out of this. Just a little bit. I know everyone's like, no, leave it all in there. But I like to use some of that fat. Simmer it, boil it down a little bit, cook to taste. Should be about it. The only thing I need to add right now is a little bit of water to fill up half this pan. And uh, that should be it for right now. I'm excited. Only way to get good water around here in the Philippines, from the dispenser. Okay, I've added just enough to kind of uh, immerse what we have in there. We know we're gonna fill it up with some coconut milk here in a second. And like I said before, I got a tiny kitchen. I got one little hot plate. Got to do this all in step and sequence. So for right now, I'm gonna take a step over, take that additional piece of pork and pork bone and get it in the fridge for tomorrow. And uh, then I'm going to clean up my station and get rid of all the pork blood and raw pork product around here. Then we'll move on to the final, the final show. Uh, just got done basically browning the pork down. Uh, take a look right here. Looking pretty good. Crackling down. Not really broke down though. There's still a lot of rare or not cooked at all pork fat and pork belly in here. But we're, we're, we're browning the edges, which is really all that matters to me. Uh, I am going to go ahead and add a little heat to this now but I'm going to keep some for color for a pretty picture when we're done at the end here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and also add in it says two more tablespoons of bagung but I'm going to go with just a little bit more because we got to be careful with not overpowering it so let's see if I can get it out here well let me hand the uh, camera back to the queen here I'm going to go about a teaspoon Adding another teaspoon worth of bagung to the recipe here. Woo! Saw that? <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop! All right, so we've got some more bagung. We've got these peppers and chiles in here. And I'm browning all that down. Looks amazing, smells absolutely divine. I'm gonna heat off those peppers and, and stuff just a little bit longer, maybe another 60 seconds or so, then they're gonna go right into the mix here. But before I do that, it's time to add the miracle make it all happen ingredient here. They got the, or the coconut cream milk. Make sure you shake it up because the fat really does separate in these things. So, shake it up. <laughs> so, boom, I've added it to the mix. Gonna let that steam off for just a second. I mean, that already looks pretty amazing. If I do say so myself. Wow. I do have to give a shout out. I was told to offer up a little bit of sugar in this. Just a wee little bit. Don't hate me for this. I had recommendation from somebody to add just a wee bit of sugar. This is sugar, right? Yes. All right, just making sure. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add maybe a teaspoon of sugar to this. And, and literally that's it. Now I'm basically done. So that's on a full simmer. We're gonna go ahead, rock this over here and transfer into our pot. Just like that. Bring this up on the pot, on the burner. So now you're seeing everything come together. The peppers, the onions, the ginger, the garlic, the sayote cubes, the long beans, the pork fat, the coconut milk, the vinegar, and the bagung. Everything coming together in one. Thank you to my wonderful live action camera woman over here for keeping up with me. Get all these flavors and stuff out of this. And boom. 
top it off. Okay, I'm gonna cover this up. We're gonna let it simmer for about 30 minutes and then I will come back, taste it at that point, make sure that the salinity, the creaminess, and the sweetness is all balanced. If not, I'll add more cream or more bagung based on how that comes up. And then uh, we'll let it simmer again for about 10 to 15 minutes, and then it's ready to go. All right, it has been 45 minutes on the rolling boil. Uh, time to give it a quick sample taste and then see what we need to add or cover up <laughs> with the flavors. Again, I've never ever studied this recipe other than today and a few and, and a few readings over this week. I've never attempted it. I haven't worked with a couple of these ingredients ever in my life. So uh, I've never worked with bagung and I've never worked with sayote. So we're gonna see how things go here. It's been boiling for about 45 minutes. Everything looks broke down pretty nicely. Um, I would say based on the level of what's sticking that it might be a little watery. You, you kind of want like the coconut cream to like stick to it. Uh, so I'm probably gonna go out there on a limb and say it's probably a little light because of all the water that I added. But we'll see, we're about to find out right now. Hmm. Well, there's a little bit of heat there, not much at all. There's some great flavors there, but I will definitely go out on a limb right off the bat and say it's a little watered down. So we're gonna go ahead and add both ingredients to this. We're gonna add some more bagung and we're gonna add some coconut milk. And I can already tell you right off the bat with as watered down as it is, and I'm getting ready to add coconut milk that I'm gonna add another full teaspoon of bagung to this mix right off the bat. I'm probably gonna add another cup, honestly, because we really wanna get that creamy, buttery, stewed, chowdery look and feel to it to where it just kind of sticks to everything. Adding it in, yeah, right about there. So we've added the bagung and we've added the coconut milk. And now we're gonna go ahead and let that roll. And we will come back to this in about 10 minutes or so and uh, flavor test it again. Give it another 20 minutes to simmer. Uh, we've reduced, we've lost about an inch of the water out of there, which was kind of my main goal at first. I'm already going to tell you now, it just smells like a delicious Filipino pork curry. <laughs> it's the best way I can describe it. <sighs> wow. It's pretty awesome. Believe it or not, it could actually probably use a little more salinity with like a little more bagoon, but I'm going to let it ride. All the fats have reduced down, they're super tender. Everything's falling apart. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Bicol Express. We're gonna go ahead and do this kind of cute and ornamental like, just for, just for presentation purposes. Got some rice here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, mash this into one of my little empty margarine cups here. Doing this for aesthetics. Don't laugh at me. Take our little presentation bowl here. Smash that right in the middle. Look at that, a little creamy margarine on there. Oh yeah. And again, if you're new to the channel, we are super minimalists here. Don't even own a ladle. So what do we have as a ladle in this house? Good old coffee cup. <laughs> so come over here to the Bicol Express. Come in, get a big old hearty scoop. And just toss that right over it. Just like that. Oh yeah. And then for aesthetics, we're just gonna go ahead, top it off with a couple of peppers. And bam, Picol Express right here. Once again, shout out this, this episode and this video is dedicated to my dear friend Dino and his entire family. We are so sorry and we give you guys all of our condolences. God bless you guys. We miss you. We cannot wait to see you when we do. And uh, we are so sorry you're not here right now, but this is dedicated to Dino and Dulce, his beautiful wife. We love you guys. God bless. And uh, thank you so much for the support and for uh, supporting us through this episode. We love you guys. And ladies and gentlemen, Bicol Express. I did it. Cheers. Yay! <laughs> Favorite part here, we're gonna take a few photos and it's time to eat. To go out on a limb and just say that this looks absolutely amazing. And I already know that it's gonna taste amazing. So I'm really, really excited for this. Um, let's get a little bit of the sayote in there, some of the cream, pork, a little bit of rice.
Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, you guys. Oh, this is so good. Dino, thank you guys for recommending this dish. We love you guys so much. This is really amazing. Oh, it's so good. Oh. It is so good, it's not even funny. And I think when I make my plate, I'm gonna add a little more bagoon to it. Uh, I'm gonna let it ride for Alyssa. I think she'll love it this way. But I'm gonna add a little more bagoon. Ooh. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, it's delicious. I love coconut, so this is right up my alley. Perfect. Yeah? Yeah. Did it? Good right. job, babe. You're welcome. I love you. I love you. She's my biggest fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Put a little wiggle in it. Ah. Cheers. If you like what you're watching, I've got plenty of other cooking episodes here. Now, remember, I'm not trying to turn this into a cooking channel. We're in the Philippines and I am giving the full Filipino experience. I'm learning the language, I'm learning the culture, I'm learning the traditions, and I'm also learning how to cook the recipes and food. Here we're learning and practicing everything that encompasses the culture of the Philippines. Not only are we learning about the people, but we're learning about the food. This is not a cooking channel permanently in its entirety. So please remember that. <laughs> On that note, if you would like to see some of these other recipes that I have either screwed up or perfected, <laughs> they're awesome. I've got one right here where I did uh, pan seed, and that was pretty much a disaster. And then I've got another one here where I did adobo and that one was pretty awesome. If you like them, click on either of these and go ahead and share, subscribe, make sure you hit the like button and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much, legends. We love each and every one of you. Salamat kaayu, maingabii. We'll see you next time. Cheers.